Hey, uh, today is something of an unofficial episode of Feminist Lexicon because we're going to be dealing with some anecdotal evidence, particularly from my personal experience. Uh, for those of you who would like to get uh, in the comments section and write me uh, a long-ass essay that basically amounts to Hitchens' razor, you know, that which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence, whatever. This is anecdotal evidence. Take it or leave it. Um, <clears throat> the, today's phrase is the teach men not to rape slash teach men not to hit women slash uh, teach men not to commit domestic violence narrative uh, that's perpetrated by feminists or propagated. I always mix those two terms up. <clears throat> I went through a, a, a home that was abusive, you know, uh, for 10 years of my life, I experienced very consistent domestic violence. Uh, three different stepfathers, age 8 to about 19. And I'm not, I'm not going to be sitting here fishing for sympathy or giving uh, morbid details to you. But I'm going to be very candid with you about the consequences of that uh, that were expressed in my behavior as an adult. And also sort of a little bit about these men and the, the source of that situation in, in my home where there was a lot of actual violence. So the th three stepfathers, one of which actually married my mother, uh, uh, all three were either drug addicts, alcoholics, or both. Um, substance abuse does not lend itself to being in a very sane state of mind. And a lot of people who are alcoholics are violent when under the influence and are under the influence a lot. Um, these three men were all very different. One was uh, much younger than my mother and was... Uh, a stoner type personality, basically not a, a terrible person at first glance, not a stupid person at first glance, uh, kind of an idiot and kind of a jerk. But, uh, you know, at the time I was eight and had no control over that situation. I was raised by a single mother. Uh, that guy, um, for whatever reason, was able to convince my mother to, you know, he lived with us, uh, spent all my mom's money uh, on crack, and uh, that lasted like two years. After that was a man my mother married. Uh, as far as I know, this man was a schizophrenic and an ex-con. Um, also, not at first glance a bad guy, was kind of nice to me, uh, unlike the previous one who was indifferent to me, and had a, a generally nice personality when he was sober. Uh, but the guy was un unhinged. He, he was a schizophrenic. He had episodes. Those were exacerbated by drugs and alcohol. Uh, and, and then the third one was a very, very intelligent man, a successful musician, and um, very charming, very good-looking man, closer to my mother's age. Um, who had kids from two previous wives, and it turns out he was an alcoholic, and when he was a drunk, he was extremely violent and psychotic. Uh, this kind of person who lost his damn mind when he drank. As far as I know, the last one, uh, the one that was from age 14 to 19, uh, was not physically abused. The other two were physically abused by their fathers and or mothers. Uh, <clears throat> all three of them definitely had emotional trauma uh, from the past with other uh, abandonment issues. They were very badly physically abused. Uh, you know, alcoholism is not a fun way to live your life at all. And, um, and all three of them physically abused me 
violently and physically abused my mother especially violently it's important also to add that my mother owned the house that we we all lived in all three of those um was in control of the finances and the breadwinner in two of those cases uh, the last one didn't even work for the majority of that five-year relationship and was just so my mother also wasn't some lifetime movie heroine who was trapped in her own home and an innocent prisoner uh I was a child and subjected to this kind of shit every night. Um, and at a phone call to the police, that would have stopped. Uh, and in fact, my, my own mother had multiple times physically prevented me from calling the police on the man physically attacking her, hurting her in a couple of cases very badly. And she lied to the police every time they showed up. And you would think crazy ass screaming and glass breaking and door slamming at 3 o'clock in the morning would make your neighbors call the police. But really, you know, a lot of the time neighbors just mind their own business. But that's neither here nor there. But what I'm, what I'm telling you here is several things. First of all, none of these these men were stupid. Um, they were of either average or above average intelligence. All three of them were aware of the consequences of their behavior. They were aware what they were doing was a crime. They were aware what they were doing was hurting me and my mother, and that didn't stop them. Um, the next thing is... All three of these people were abused by their parents, two of them very, very badly. I mean, I, I was hit and, and tossed around as a kid and definitely emotionally abused regularly. But, you know, I was never, like, tied to a fucking bed and beat with a fucking belt. Okay, this, that's the kind of horrific, like, torture shit that happened to a couple of these guys. See... The main precursor of somebody who uh, abuses women is not being a, a snidely whiplash villain. Uh, none of these people were evil, it, like, or thought what they were doing was good. Um, all of these people were raised in a very violent home. And that's the main precursor to domestic violence is people who were domestic abuse survivors themselves. Um, and all three of them had substance abuse problems. Or, and all three of them, or at least two of them I know, have uh, mental health issues. Like I said one was a schizophrenic, the other one was probably uh, had some sort of personality disorder normal people don't just one day show up into a relationship and hit women or abuse children. And it has nothing to do with whether or not you sat down a prepubescent boy and, and told him, don't hit girls, don't rape girls. Instinct, like human biology, we don't have a natural predisposition towards being violent towards family. This is a learned behavior. And it's not learned, you know, by omission. It's not, nobody told me this is wrong, therefore I can do this. Or it's okay or good for me to do this. this is not how this works. The, it was ingrained as children, helpless children who had no choice but to be in this situation, you know. You know, fucking, I turned 17, I got a GED, and I went to college. I dropped right the fuck out of high school and got right the fuck out of the house. At the fucking first chance. Okay? And and then I was out of that situation. But did it did it have consequences on my behavior? Well, let me be candid with you. I've never hit a woman in my life. I've never physically put my hands on a girlfriend that I've ever had. Ever. Have I screamed at girlfriends? Yes. 
Have I broken things around the house during arguments? Yes. Have I been emotionally abusive in relationships in the past? Yes. And the reason why is because I, I don't want to sound like fucking a high and mighty or a humble brag or something, but it's kind of crazy when, you know, you're not the most adjusted 12-year-old kid in the world, but you're the only sane person in your home. And you can't tell your mother, get rid of this bum, he's hurting me, he's hurting you, I'm afraid he's going to kill you. Um, and And she doesn't fucking... Say, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let me just dump this guy in the curb because I can. You know, she's not a prisoner. And she's not helpless. And my mother also is not stupid. And I just want to state quickly as an aside, me and my mother got therapy. Our relationship's fine. This kind of shit doesn't happen anymore. You know, I'm an adult now. And she doesn't date people like that anymore. It's all gravy. But, you know, this is in the past. And my mother was also not abused at all, at least not physically. You could say some measure of uh, pressure to be a straight-A student or whatever is a form of emotional abuse. I, I think it is, but that's a, that's a different story. So that that's the extent that she had to deal with things at, in her home. All these men were horribly abused, victims. Um, but, you know... I was taught that my parents were unreasonable and crazy and a danger to myself and to each other. Uh, my, my mother was an antagonist. She didn't do anything you would think rationally to protect herself or me from these men. This was a 10-year situation, okay? And this, these conversations happened as soberly as possible at some points and as aggressively and emotionally and hysterically at other times. But everybody was aware of what was going on, okay? And it didn't get sorted out rationally. And so I was around a mother who would never listen to me and would really only... Uh, when it came to some of these more violent situations, you know, because they weren't always horrible, but it was horrible 75% of the time. It was bad. Um, but she would only back down from emotionally abusing these men who responded with physical abuse, neither of which of those things is okay or excusable at all. Okay, I'm not blaming my mother I'm not, I'm also not laying all the blame on the feet of these men, okay? This was, like many, probably most domestic abuse situations, a, a mutual thing, that there was reciprocation of violence and reciprocation of abuse. Um, you know, so I, I was raised where the only time she would back down ever was when violence was directed at her. And as an adult, you know, I had to come to grips with the fact that I have impulses from that because, I mean, you know, when we're all adults, we can all make rational decisions, but when you're a kid, you're impressionable. And people are really formed, you know, fucking by their parents. I actually, you know, am a proponent of nature and nurture, not only nature or only nurture when it comes to everything, you know. And I, I'm not saying, uh, ever going to support the idea that violent video games make kids shoot up schools or rap lyrics make people chauvinists or misogynists. And to what extent that I was kind of exposed to that kind of stuff in, in school and whatnot, uh, I was taught chauvinism, not sexism, to patronize and um, show increased deference, increased respect, increased charity to women uh, rather than men. So, you know, I wasn't exactly taught equality, but I wasn't a uh, taught to abuse women. I was taught to patronize them. That's chauvinism. Uh, you know, but that's easier to unlearn than your what your family teaches you. You learn from the dynamics 
of your family, your parents, the people who raise you when you're a child. Okay, um, I'm an adult now and was able to sort through this shit, but as a child, I was taught that if somebody won't listen to you and they're hurting your feelings, you respond with violence. Now, I never put my hands on a woman, but I have done reprehensible things, you know, verbally and destruction of private property, which is a fucking crime, and it's abuse. And that's certainly something I don't do anymore and I'm very well aware of now. But you need to understand that these men didn't like their fathers. And they knew what their fathers did was wrong. And yet they carried that on as parental figures. Uh, in the case of one of them, I actually had kids. So as a father. And yeah, he treated his children fucking horribly. And... It, it's because that was the way they were conditioned. And I was very well aware, even as a child, that what was happening was wrong and was horrible. And I had a lot of empathy for these men that I lived with. They were my family, not close family, but stepfathers. And I had a lot of empathy for my mother. And at the same time, I fucking hated them both. Or sympathy, I should say. A child has not so many opportunities for empathy. But sympathy for them. I understood that they weren't Emperor Palpatine or Snidely Whiplash. They weren't entirely psychopathic. And they weren't blank slates that had been taught by fucking movies to, to hit women. But at the same time, yeah, I resented the fuck out of them, and I had no intention of being anything like them. And yet, I had to come to grips at, with later on as an adult that I had developed behaviors unconsciously that I needed to sort out, and I did. And I, I don't do shit like that anymore. You know, I'm a different person than I was as a young adult. I'm getting older now. Um, but, uh, I could have been like those men, if not for being lucky enough to have access to counseling and have access to, you know, information on how to deal with that kind of trauma. And trauma pe teaches, pe well, it doesn't teach, it, trauma conditions people to behave in certain ways permanently. You know, post-traumatic stress is a real thing. I have it. Uh, I'm not trying to glamorize it. And I could have really uh, gone into really nasty detail here about this, and I, I didn't mean to talk near this long about it. But I hope you understand my point. Telling these men, don't hit girls or whatever, having some campaign where some fucking school assembly sits a bunch of 10-year-old uh, boys down and, and teaches them about this shit, whether they know anything about it or not, uh, through any sort of personal experience or they have that the happiest household ever, is fucking entirely unproductive. It's irrelevant and it's insulting. And, and at worst, it can uh, cause actual harm to kids to teach them that women are, are different from boys or women are different from men and, and Girls are different from men, and they need to be patronized. And that also that they have to think of themselves, these boys have to think of themselves as threats to every, everyone around them, uh, to condition them to think of themselves as uh, latent monsters. That uh, uh, unless feminism or social justice warrior PC bullshit comes and fucking validates them and and gets them to check their privilege, uh, that they'll be horrible fucking people. And the people are suscept most susceptible to this kind of shit. The people who are signing, holding up these signs saying teach men not to rape and that shit, and the men who are saying this shit, I'm willing to bet you uh, have no experience with this at all. And it's possible, I I've seen with a couple of them where I thought more likely that some of these men had abused women and were spreading this bullshit in order to make some sort of recompense. 
Um, otherwise, uh, all the same, it's bullshit. It's not the source of these issues. It's not how you treat these issues. It's not how you solve these issues. It's not how you combat these issues. Everything about who you're blaming and how you're proposing to sort this problem with this fucking slogan is bullshit. And it's harmful. It's not just useless. It's a threat to people's mental health, to the people's social culture. And it's fucking bull. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry for rambling for 20 minutes. I hope you guys understand what I was trying to say here. And I hope you understand that I'm well aware that this is my personal experience I'm speaking from, that I'm not coming at you with fucking statistics or whatever. But I think you'll find that what I said makes sense. And if you don't, I worry about you. Thanks for watching.